What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. In the past two days, DICE and EA tried to give us a lot of news about the next Battlefield game. Literally, we are being bombarded by the news. And most of what we hear is exactly what we want to hear, which is, again, just a bit concerning. Now that 2042 has gone through a lot of shit, really, we have to be honest here, they probably know what the community wants more, and they are exactly telling us that. But we have to be clear and aware about one thing. We're talking about EA and DICE. They said the exact same words for 2042, and we all know how 2042 turned out to be. So do make sure to take that with a grain of salt for your own good. Whatever happens, guys, I want to tell you, you should not pre-order this game. There are content creators doing it. You're going to wait for their first impressions, wait to see some gameplay of the actual game. If the game was what marketed, then you probably might consider buying it. Okay. However, let's take a look at the news today. So first of all, we have two concept arts. You've probably seen that uh, on the thumbnail of the video. Let's take a look at those first, and then we're going to uh, go back to the news. We're going to talk about everything that's been going on with the latest EA Investor Day and what the information in that uh, sit down was, basically. So for the first concept art, this is really uh, like classic Battlefield. There's a helicopter close to the ground. There are destroyed and deserted houses everywhere. The, the quarters are tight. It's obviously a close quarter map, or at least this part of it is close quarter. As you can see, there is a soldier uh, hiding in the corner. Uh, the uniform of the soldier, if you pay attention, is really like, uh, like a military classic uniform. It really reminds me of Battlefield 3. It's not like Battlefield 4, but the theme of that uniform is really like Battlefield 3 and there is some sort of M4, M16 weapon in his hand. <clears throat> so there's a lot to be uh, taken even from a small concept art like this. With the specialists gone, we have a good chance of getting some old school Battlefield uniforms back into the game. Of course, there will be definitely uniforms that you can buy for each class. They have to make money somehow. But the fact that there is uniforms that really look uh, like some realistic military uniforms is really great. And for the next one, this concept art really reminds me of Operation Firestorm. If you look at the theme, the clouds, the sky, and the mountains in the background, it looks exactly like that. However, there's a pretty open landscape. There are tanks moving towards the mountain. Probably the battlefield, the real map, is somewhere between uh, the tanks and the mountains. It's somewhere over there. And this is just a concept art. We don't want everything to be shown here. But it really reminds me of Operation Firestorm. The theme and everything, it looks similar to that. And now let's move on to what the news were. So if you guys didn't know, uh, there was some EA Investor Day, which is a sit down with their investors, basically. And they speak about the future plans. In their plans, the next Battlefield game, Battlefield 2025, or whatever you want to call it, uh, is the most ambitious game, right? They said it was, and they probably have to speak about it more. And they really did. They really spoke about a lot of things. And uh, let's take a look and go through them. It all starts from a small tweet from DICE lead UI designer. And he confirms, take a look at this. This is really ridiculous. Confirms that the next Battlefield game will have scoreboard at launch, just like BF3 and BF4 did at launch. And if you guys don't believe me, his name is Kamala K. And... This is exactly what he said. Second Battlefield that I'm working on and sticking to classic recipe. Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 had scoreboarded launch after all, right? And he smiled. This is really the corniest and the most ridiculous tweet I've ever seen from a game developer. Like this is not even funny at this point for a Battlefield fan. It is insane that these guys somehow came to the conclusions back in the day that Battlefield 2042 does not need a scoreboard. This is absolutely ridiculous. It is the, really the most absurd thing I've ever seen in the history of my life playing video games. But let's move on. EA says all this development is powered by their Battlefield Central tech team, who is focused on enabling these developers with the technology and tools to unlock their capabilities. We have the largest, strongest, and most focused team in the history of Battlefield. Again, the words you're hearing right now are the exact same words that they said about Battlefield 2042. That is exactly why I'm telling you that you really should take all of this with a pinch of salt. They are trying to market everything that they want to sell, right? So that's exactly what they're doing. And then they confirmed that the next Battlefield game is being developed by four studios. We knew that before. Now they are trying to completely categorize what every studio is trying to do. DICE is leading the charge on multiplayer. Criterion Games is driving content and experiences across single player and multiplayer. Motive is single player storytelling. I'm not sure if they work on any other part as well. Like, is it just storytelling, the literal story of the game? Or they are just completely working on different 
different aspects of the single player campaign that I don't know. And Ripple Effect is working on a new battlefield experience fueled by their unique battlefield DNA. Now, this is probably the battle royale that Tom Henderson, the lead of Insider Gaming, actually uh, said for like four or five months ago that there will be some sort of new experience for uh, the next battlefield game, probably a free to play uh, battlefield royale experience. That's something that can be completely a two edged sword. If they mess it up, it's going to have a big impact on the multiplayer part as well, like the base multiplayer that you have to pay for. And if it really turns out to be successful, then it's going to have a very positive impact on the multiplayer itself because, well, when people start to play a free to play game and they like it, uh, they're intimidated by it and they want to buy the full game, see what's going on in the multiplayer, definitely has a positive impact. But again, Ripple should be able to pull it off. If they mess it up, even if the multiplayer is really good, then I'm guessing that the the effect that this free-to-play battle royale will have on the main game is not going to be uh, ignored. You can't just ignore it. And also, EA in the Investor Day said something very interesting about the next Battlefield game. They said, we've been playing the next Battlefield game nearly daily for over a year, which I have no idea how accurate this is. Like, have they really been playing the next Battlefield game every single day for the past one year? Over a year, actually. With that said, uh, the only conclusion there is, is that at least some of the key parts of the game are now at least ready or partially ready. And uh, they are now trying to just polish things, making things better. If that's the case, well, that's good. You know, having a playable version for over a year and you have like more than a year to test it out, to uh, just polish it is really good news for the Battlefield game. All of that said, if this is true, actually, because I'm pretty sure you guys can't trust EA nor DICE either. The Battlefield teams have prioritized what they call their green initiative, which means they're focused on software stability and the game is always playable for playtesting. They're already testing with players and they plan to introduce a new large-scale community-driven testing early next year. So in early 2025, we are going to have a large-scale community testing and I have no idea what they mean by that. Uh, by large-scale, they probably mean an open beta. There has to be something like that going on. But again, I've, I've always said it and I'll say it again. You don't really need to have only one uh, like community testing program. You don't need to. You have a lot of time. You have over a year ahead of you before you release this game. So you have all that time and you only want to like finish this with a three days open beta thing. That doesn't really make sense. But they have a lot of time and they want to give us a community driven testing early next year. They will still have more than like nine months, 10 months after that first test. So they can do that again and again and again until they have enough feedback to shape the battlefield as the community wants it. So I hope we get news about uh, what they are going to do with this program earlier so we know how it works. And they said as well, this will give the team more feedback on gameplay, performance and fun factor. One of the key things about 2042 is the performance. Actually, it's not the best. You guys know it. The mouse input lag has always been there since beta until right now that I'm making this video. It's been there and it has never been fixed. And I don't think it will be ever fixed. They have to put a lot of effort in the performance part of the next Battlefield game because as an FPS game, performance really matters. Like the relationship between performance and gameplay are uh, pretty tight and pretty close. You can't have good gameplay, but ridiculous performance and wants people to enjoy the game. That fun factor goes out of the equation with any of these two uh, lacking. If gameplay lacks but performance is good, there is no fun factor. Gameplay is perfect, like top-notch perfect, but the performance is weak, then the fun factor will still be out of the equation because nobody enjoys like playing a game that is fun gameplay-wise, but the performance is crap. You see, there's a very tight uh, relationship between gameplay and performance, and they have to pull those off perfectly to be able to enable that fun factor for the community and for the players. And they also commented on players basically investing over 250 million hours in the series over the last 12 months. And they are showing some concept arts in the background that we've just gone through in the beginning of the video. And that goes the EA Investor Day conference. Uh, definitely some interesting news. Again, I'm telling you, they are giving a lot of things that we want. They want us to hear those things. And there is a lot of way to go. There's a long road ahead from hearing what you want and actually getting what you want. So you guys better keep your eyes peeled. Don't fall for anything that EA or DICE say because mm, they have a bad history of saying these things and not making them happen. Go down in the comment section and let me know what you think about the news. Let me know what you think about the concept arts because I think they are the most uh, fun and most important things in this conference. Like, of course, it's going to have a scoreboard, you know, but the concept arts actually give us some clue about the next game and how it looks. So that's why I really like to see them more and I want to see more coming. Thank you all guys for watching. Hope this was a helpful video and until next time, stay cool.